So now I'm following on from the previous video I did where I CNC cut all the parts for Rocket Mark II. Uh, if you didn't see that video, it might be good just to shoot back and have a quick look at that and you'll see all the components that come before this video. So what I've got in front of me here is the frame construction board and I'm just going to go over how that's used to align the frames, make sure that everything's square and basically do a complete assembly of a couple of frames and just show you how that all works. So the first thing I'm going to do is get all the parts cleaned up for one frame and get them on the board and we'll go through what everything is. So this is the basic makeup of a pretty typical, as I would call it, ring frame. So it's a frame that goes completely round the deck, there's no openings or anything in it. And the numbering on this, so you've got um, most of the parts are labelled with the frame number at the front and then a letter which will kind of determine what it is. So we've got five floor there, um, I've got five port side, five deck beam there and five starboard side. We've also got the constructional kind of supports for the frame so those are frame 5 support forward and frame 5 support aft. Uh, we've then got the gussets for this frame which are five chine gussets and five shear gussets. So that's pretty much it for frame 5. So the frame construction board has holes for each frame and those are engraved next to each hole. First thing to do then is just to find all the numbers for that frame and just knock an alignment dowel into that. So this is the type of dowel I'm using, it's just a 10mm fluted dowel. Um, the little flutes just help it sit quite nice and tight in the hole without getting any air locks or anything like that so uh, I definitely recommend them if you can get hold of them. If you can't you can just use a standard dowel, either will be fine really. So the alignment dowels on most frames are positioned where the corner cutouts are for the battens, um, which would be the chine battens and the shear battens. Uh, there are some frames that are open on the top as well, um, such as three and four, so you can see here there's another dowel position at the top which will then carry those and help align them. So once you've got the um, dowels in the correct position, you can basically just slot the frame parts in, so that will just come down and sit onto that. Because all the radiuses on the uh, CNC parts are cut for a diameter of 10mm maximum, um, they will also match the 10mm dowel. The idea behind that being that you can cut these parts with anything up to a 10mm cutter, so that will take you right up to a kind of 3 8 standard bit that you may use. So the parts then just slot down and meet into those dowels. That will hold your floor timber at the correct height and nice and square. The two lines that are marked on the board are basically just for reference and uh, the bottom one is the constructional floor which is referenced in the plans and then you've just got a centre line as well. Um, in case you wanted to mark something like the centre line on the frames it's quite handy to have that on there just if you need to add anything in the future um, you can measure quite easily out from the centre to make sure that things are, are nice and even. So that's the floor timber in. Um, then the deck beam comes in, knock that up into the corner of one of those dowels and then drop that down. Some of these parts due to the angle of this cutout won't just push straight up in like that so they may need to be dropped down from the top or possibly even with the dowel knocked down into the frame afterwards. But uh, most of those should slot in quite easily like that. And then you've got your two uh, side timbers, so you've got your port side, which fits in there, and that joint should nicely align everything. And then your starboard side. So 
so you should have a nice tight fit of all joints. One thing to possibly consider with some frames if you've engraved the uh, part markings on them is that they can be mirrored. So um, for example if frame 5 you wanted these engravings to be facing forward you can just fit this frame the other way around or if it's just a particular part you can actually swap the port side and the starboard side if you didn't want those letters facing aft you wanted them facing forward so you can uh, you can swap that around quite easily so then on to the gussets next so you've got the shear gussets um, exactly the same principle basically they line up around that dowel and then you can just swing them into position and line up those two outside faces with most frames uh, you've got gussets for either side for frames such as the transom of course you've got a complete transom board on the outside so you only have gussets on the forward side of that one uh, then got the trying gussets so that is basically all the parts for the first side of frame 5 so I'm actually in a position now where I can start gluing and fixing that together what I think I'm going to do is um, just mask up these lines here so I'm going to epoxy all these joints together and I don't really want too much of a spread of epoxy coming out onto the frame so I'm just going to run a little bit of masking tape along there and that will make it much easier to clean that frame up afterwards without having to sand epoxy back out and uh, should give a nice neat job So you can see what I've done there is just masked outside of the pencil line just a little bit so um, that's going to make the joint nice and easy to clean up without getting any glue spreading onto the rest of the frame. Uh, what you really don't want to be doing is masking inside that line and trapping it when you put the gusset on. Uh, you'll end up trying to tear the tape out from underneath so just watch out for that. So I'm just going to dry fit the gussets now and I'm going to use um, 8 gauge by 3 quarter inch bronze screws for that. I'm just going to use this little trend bit for doing that and um, that drills a little pilot hole and a countersink at the same time. Uh, what you can actually do is set the length of that pilot drill bit. Of course what we don't want to be doing is drilling down into the construction board and making a mess of that. So I'm going to set that pilot drill so it's just a little bit short of the screw. Um, Probably so the last little bit of the screw just bites into the timber and gets a good hold. So I'll get that set up and um, mark out their positions for drilling. So of course you've got screws coming in from either side on these gussets and what you really don't want to be doing is fouling in the middle of the frame. So um, what a good thing to do is just to put your gussets side by side like this before you screw them to the frame. Of course they're going to be like that and just mark them out so they're not going to foul each other. Okay, so once all the gussets are dry fitted on the first side, you can just flip the frame over, fit it back into the dowels again. That should sit nice and flat, and then you can do the gussets on the second side. Okay, so I've dry fitted all the joints and then taken everything back apart again. You can see I've just got the gussets there with the screws just backed out in them so they're ready to go back on and they're stacked in pairs as well. So I'm ready to get mixing up some epoxy and we'll get the joints glued. Ok 
Okay, so I'm just going to go over each joint and brush it with a little bit of epoxy first. Just kind of let that wick into the wood because you don't want it absorbing the epoxy and drawing it away from the joint. So I'm just going to kind of wet up the ends of all of these joints first and then probably just come back to them and reapply before I actually put the joint together. So you can probably just see on the end of that piece of wood there where the epoxy is starting to wick into the joint and it almost kind of dries the joint back out. So uh, that's the reason for just brushing some on there first and letting that just soak in a little bit and then revisit all the joints before you actually put them together and just reapply the epoxy. Otherwise that will kind of wick away from the joint and uh, weaken it significantly. Okay, so I'm going to put that frame together. I'm just going to use these little uh, pieces of wood that I've got just to keep the frame off the surface slightly so it doesn't get too covered in epoxy. Uh, the reason for making this board out of melamine is to kind of help with that because you're going to get epoxy all over it really. Um, but the melamine should be nice and easy to keep clean so that's going to help us quite a bit. So we'll put frames back in, same as we did before with dry fitting. Okay, and then we can glue these sections up ready to take the gussets. So that uh, masking tape helps keep that edge clean so that you're not going to get too much epoxy on the finished frame which you're going to have to clean up. Uh, it also just gives you a guide of where you've got to glue up to so it's quite a helpful little thing to do that. So I'm going to do the same thing with the gussets as well, I'm just going to uh, glue those as well as the frames so both areas can kind of absorb a bit of epoxy before you put them together. Okay, so that's one side fitted. I'm going to flip the frame over and I'm just going to get rid of. Oh, that's great. Made a mess. So that is the frame glued up, what I've done is just cleaned up the uh, construction board there with a bit of thinners, just got most of the epoxy and stuff off of it and uh, put the frame back into place and then I've just weighted the corners with uh, some bits of scrap wood just so that everything is kept nice and square and the frame's not going to twist whilst the uh, glue sets. So I'll leave that to set up as it is and then that's one frame done. Uh, the only other thing left to do is the support legs. So the frame supports consist of two parts, um, frame support aft and frame support forward and they just quite simply fit together like so and then support the frame in the correct position off the strong back when you're assembling the whole boat. So um, they can just be fixed together with any old sort of glue and screws, pins, however you want to do them. So uh, 
I'll get those put together and just show you where they sit on the frame. So these are designed to fit on the strong back. That is what this inner corner is for. So the easiest way to get these aligned nicely without having to just kind of do them by hand is just put a, a block in a vise or something like that and you can just sit that in against it and then slide the top one in against that as well. And you know the two are going to be perfectly aligned where they want to be then. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of tight bond on that to hold them together. Okay, and you have a mirrored pair, so just remember when you're putting these together that they should be opposites like that because you have one on either side of the frame. So uh, don't get caught out with that one. So the frame support legs then, they fit on the bottom side of the frame and they butt up into the inner floor button. And these will help you correctly position all of the frames so that they're in perfect line uh, when it comes to assembly. Um, the bottom edge of these reference two lines. So you've got the constructional floor line which is here marked on the frame construction board. And you've also got both of the inner edges of the strong back. So when you set up the strong back for this boat to keep all the frames in line, each one of these frame supports will sit onto that edge and keep the frame square. Uh, the idea is that you can just sort of tack these to the frame with some little screws or clamp them if you don't want to mark the frames up. And uh, they vary throughout the boat. Obviously they get longer as the forward frames come up higher. But um, the idea is that it helps keep everything nice and square even when it comes to assembling all the frames. Okay, so that's it on the video for how to put a frame together using the frame construction board and all the parts that are involved with that. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, please remember to subscribe if you'd like to see some other stages from this plan set and how the parts go together. I'll aim to show as much as I can. I'm not actually going to build a full boat from this kit of parts, I'm just going to show the basic kind of bits that put it all together. So that's it for this video, hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.